So thank you for having me. So, Kem, I first came across you at Brad's Barbershop. Yeah. You seemed like a kind of quiet guy. You know, it seems like <laughs> yeah. I was wrong in my assumption that you was a quiet guy. The thing is, I think everyone always thought I was... No, do you know what? I don't think I was. I, I, it's quite dependent on who I'm with. Like, I'm a very flamboyant out there character, but I've got to be around the right people. Do you know what I mean? Like, if I'm around people I'm not comfortable with, I can be a little bit reserved and in my own. But I think on Love Island, I just eased into it, and You're people yourself, yeah. people saw the real me. Do you know what I mean? Out there, a bit crazy, and I think that's why I guess people invested their time into me because they I was real. Do you know what I mean? I didn't go in there and try and play a game, and I think that's why I've done so well off the back of it, and that's why. I, I think all these opportunities after leaving now with TV and stuff has come because I'm not trying to play a character. I'm just being Kem. And it's easy and it, to be yourself. Though. Yeah, you always get caught out if you're trying. You're trying to act like someone else. Yeah, put it that way. But yeah, I, I was at Brad's doing barbering. Do you know what I mean? Barbering was something I was massively, massively passionate about. It's kind of what put me on the map in a way. In a way, like if it weren't for Miles, like he was the one who introduced me into doing a lot of stage work. Yeah. Started working with Gorilla Barber, and that was what really got me onto the barbering scene. In a way, we done some magazine shoots. Then I just got so into it, and I just started wanting to do videos. Everything. You were literally doing Love Island about to explode. It was yeah. I'll be honest. The barbering scene for me was bald, like ready, ready to blow. You were literally just about. We were doing. Me and you were gonna do a lot of different yeah, things. We had a lot of things in the planned it up, innit? Things with me is I get obsessive, so. When I do something, I become obsessed about it. Like, be art barbering, it become my obsession. It was like I had in my head that I wanted to be the biggest in the UK. Like, yeah. I was like, I had it. And it was just, I was just getting better and better so quick. I remember you saying to me, you was like, it's just so fast paced. But then obviously Love Island come up. Same, I become obsessed. I was adamant I was going to win. I was adamant it was going to go a certain way. I left and now I'm adamant that I'm not stopping there. I just oh, yeah. finished my own show, just brought out a song that got number one and I just want to keep pushing. And um, for me, like coming here today, it's more about like, Miles was the one who introduced me into the industry. Like he was a big inspiration for me because he does so much like charity wise, like with Gorilla Barbering, like the first person to do it. Like he doesn't have to do it, but he does. And he's a great barber. And I know this has been his dream to do this for so long and I know how well he's going to do it. And I just think it's good to just, that's why I wanted to come here today. Just to, just to say like I don't think people actually realise how long this has been a plan for you, innit? Well, you know about my plans from day. Like, we've always been on it with each other. Like, we always used to tell each other little bits. Like, so from day one, it's been, it's been a thing that you knew about. I had the name from when we was. Yeah, like, I remember the name. He had the name a good two years ago, a year ago. Yeah. But obviously, for different reasons, do you know what I mean? There was finance, there was you couldn't find a place, there were so many things. Like, of course, it's not, barbering. it's not easy. Like, you were swamped with guerrilla barbering. But I think time's perfect for you now. And, like, thing with Miles is he's just raw. He's just raw, and that's what I think there isn't enough of in the industry for me. Like, I haven't been in it, so I don't know what it's about. But it's I've been out of it. I've been out of it for a while now because of the show and everything. It's kind of so I don't know. I haven't cut it. But for me, one thing I thought about it was is everyone's just trying to copy each other. So someone sets one trend, and the whole nation wants to do that. Whereas with Miles, he's very raw. He does his own thing. He's completely unique, and I think that's what needs to happen more in the industry. And I know that's what you're going to bring yeah, with sure. with the shop. I mean, to Miles's credit, I mean, when I came and interviewed you, it was March 2016. Yeah, man. Miles did actually whisper in my ear. He said that Kem would be someone to watch. We, none of us could have ever have known that it would yeah. have been, you know, outside of Barbara. Yeah. You know, you've blown up. You've got yeah. 1.7 yeah, million yeah. Uh, followers. And prior to going on to Love Island, you had, what was it? A couple thousand. thousand yeah. Yeah. So yeah. it just shows you that life can change in, in a heartbeat, yeah, yeah. you know? So with your newfound success, one thing I have to clear up before I move any uh, move forward anymore with this interview, I was doing my research this morning yeah. and it keeps coming up, hairdresser, 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 yeah. hairdresser. What's the crack? I think when I went on Love Island, obviously I, I got long out from Essex. They wanted me to be that typical hairdresser going to do the girl's hair. Like It was something they wanted to do. I'm not a hairdresser, I've always been a barber, do you know what I mean? Like, you did, yeah, but you did do. I did a course in hairdressing, but like, I'm, like, I'm not great, oh, I'll be honest. Yeah, but when I saw you, you was a barber, so this is what... Yeah, exactly, so I'm not. But obviously when I went in there, it, it looked better to be a hairdresser. So I went, so everyone thinks I'm a hairdresser, but they don't know. 
You were a men's hairdresser? Yeah, I'm a men's... I, I like to call myself a men's hairdresser because I don't... Like, I like all the long haircuts and stuff like that, but I'm not a women's hairdresser. As a lot of people saw when I was in there and girls asked me to do their hair. I, I think like, you did a job, I was mate. blagging my way through women's haircuts. It was a joke. So really, the media need to know that, you know, it's not cool anymore to be a hairdresser. It's cool to oh, be a barber. completely. And I think so basically, barbering's, yeah, really, really taken off. And I think everyone thinks that hairdressing, 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 when really barbering's the thing now that's setting the trends, that's pushing over. Everyone wants to watch videos on it, see, show photos. It's not, I think it's really taken over the hairdressing. So, okay, so there's, let's nothing, make it. there's nothing to be ashamed of to say you're a barber and rather be it. Everyone wants to be a hairdresser, do you know what I mean? Okay. Was one of my, he was like the leader of the guerrilla gang and stuff. Like that was what we were planning to do. Yeah, it? I was planning on doing like a big campaign. And we was gonna do, oh mate, we were gonna do a lot. We yeah. had a very big. But like for me, obviously at the moment there's a lot going on. Like I, I've had to take myself out of the industry for a while because I haven't got the time and management wise, it, is it, is. Isn't, it isn't the right move to do yet. But I've got big, big plans in terms of. I don't think I'll go back to cutting hair soon. But I'm gonna bring out a big grooming range from waxes to. To, so nothing to do with hair, like a big grooming range with that's going to be sold in big shops. Watch this space. Watch this but yeah, it's going to be huge. Like it's going to be a big campaign that I'm starting from now that could take a year or more. But it's going to be big and like, like I said to Miles, I want to bring him involved in it as well. Yeah, we can exactly. in any way get the shop involved in it. But yeah, I got I got some big plans with that. Okay, but, so before stardom, kind of tell me what you did in particular in terms of rolling up your sleeves to help the. Uh, Gorilla Barbering charity. So, in terms of Gorilla Barbering, I used to go to all the events, I used to help out, we used to, I used to do the pop up shops. Yeah, probably. We slept out on the street for Man, a night and raised money. Ago, we bro. raised up two grand, I bro, raised that. No, you, you took good though. <laughs> You, I raised a lot of money on good that. Though. A lot of his family Turkey, yeah. I got, My nan's one of 14. You can imagine how many yeah, family members yeah, I've got want to donate. But um, yeah, and I used to love it. Do you know what I mean? I think it's an unbelievable cause what he's doing. And I'm going to be, I'm soon running a campaign. I'm going to be doing a big campaign with Childline yeah. for kids with mental health and anxiety, which is something I believe in a lot, which is I'm going to be doing. And I, obviously, me and Miles are on the same wavelength, so in any way I can help and we can we can in, in, introduce things into each other to keep pushing Gorilla Barber and I will because Childline's obviously a huge, Massive. huge and I think that's I think that's a really important charity that people should be touching on because there's a lot about men's mental yeah. health at the moment, which is great because I've dealt with mental health, I have issues and stuff like that. But the kids is like yeah. if I had help as a kid that I think I could have been maybe a bit more sweet now. Yeah. Not that, I, that I'm not that I'm dealing with a yeah. massive thing, but I think it's amazing what you've done. I've, I've you actually got a, um, a big spread with the sun this Tuesday coming out about my mental health and anxiety, like just pure chem setting and mental health anxiety, which I've done yesterday, which is coming out on Tuesday, which gives everyone an insight of what I'm, what I'm doing with that because a lot of people wanted to know about it. So I com I've done a complete thing with them, which will be out on Tuesday. So Okay, so talking about charities and mental health at the same time, you've kind of put... Um, Grilla Barbering on the back burner because you had some yeah, mental yeah. challenges in the last couple of months. Tell me kind of what challenges you were going for because I think it's a common problem and having Chem here today can help to highlight the, yeah, the problem yeah. and where people can actually go for help. My, well, my issues are literally just, it's just, it's almost stress related for me. Um, there's a lot of things I wanted to do in this life that I haven't done and I haven't been able to do and it just makes you, it gives you a sense of just worthlessness um, in my in my specific um, arrangement. I mean, I've been on meds for like five, six years uh, for mental health, for anxiety and depression. Um, but I'm with like, with my, do you know what helps me? My missus, my kids and my pals, like my mates like Cam and, and people like that, that, that we can talk to about things and do you know what? If someone's your friend, they'll listen to you. If they're not your friend, then and they don't want to listen to that stuff, then they're not your pal. That's how I see mm. it. I've got. I can count my friends on one hand now. I'm 29 years old. I'm 30 in March, and like I've got my I've got my boys, I've got my family, and that's 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 who I talk to. That's who I need to open up to, and letting everyone else know that there's a lot of us out there with these issues, who who, who struggle with mental health. Talk, man. Yeah. And like anxiety and mental health is just all fear and you have to get to a point where you learn that you either run away from it all your life or you stand up and you think, what am I going to do in my life? And for me, like, that was one, you'll, you'll see in my article at The Sun, there's a lot of things people don't know that 
I didn't do my GCSEs at school and I was taken and I missed out on a lot of things and to look where I'm at now to then I just stood up and I thought I'm either going to sit here and not have a life or I'm going to sit and make something for myself and I think regardless of people say love blah 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 you put yourself to get these opportunities it's not luck don't get right. me wrong there's a part of luck but once I was in there, it was me that won the show, it was me that done this, and it's putting yourself out there and making things happen. And I think that's one thing you've done. You, you was at a stage before when we was working together, you was kind of giving up on it. And now you've stood up and gone, do you know what? what? I've got a family, kids, I'm talented, and I'm going to make something of what I can do. And that's why I don't really go, I'll be honest, I don't go and promote anything. And like, I'm not just here to promote today because Miles is my friend. I'm genuinely here because I think he's going to smash it. And I, and, I, and I think everyone needs to, don't get me wrong, like, He's, I can just see him excelling, excelling. Like he's got one shop now. I, I, I can't see why not in a couple of years' time he's going to be popping him up left, right, and centre. He's got the, he's got the thing for it now. So yeah. And where would you where would you go for personally? Where would you recommend people who are watching this interview to go if they didn't have any friends around them to deal with depression and anxiety? Childline, somewhere like that. Childline's unbelievable. It's anonymous. They've got people who know what they're talking about. They've got constant constant help you call, can call, call it all these people because I didn't know about these people growing up and call these people because they can the best thing I ever did with my mental health which really the, the, when I like, I dealt with it under my belt for a long time I didn't really speak to people about it when I joined Brad's barber in um, in home church where is it I've been stuck sorry I started speaking to people like Ken we, we become close because we talk about these things and it helped me it helped me. I've got friends that I used to work in a tattoo shop who said to me, Miles, you need to do your own thing. And it just opens up your eyes and speak to people because we've got friends that have dealt with yeah. it. And we to like, it's better. It's easy to hide. It's not easy to jump. So I say jump because it's harder and you get more from it and you can handle your, your mental health and, your, and how you feel so much better. Okay. That's what I've done. And I think that's what like today's about really is the fact that Miles has just come out and he's thought, you know what, and he's, and, he's, and he's pushing himself and he's doing something amazing and I think that's what people need to realise, you can either sit back and just accept what's happening or you can put yourself out there, do you know what I mean? Like You didn't expect this time last year you'd have your own shot, but you have, do you know what I mean? And, and, and I know you're going to keep pushing and pushing, that's what it's about and I think people use barbering as a way to do it, they use it to distract themselves and I think that's what you do, I do, that's where we all started. 100%, yeah, we throw ourselves... I know it sounds stupid, but throwing yourself into a, a public eye or pushing yourself forward doing interviews like this, like when we did, our, me and Ken did, our, did an advert with, um, with Shell, like we're, realistically, we're anxious people and we don't deal best with that kind of situation. But when you put yourself in that situation and you've overcome that, for me, yeah. like Shell, the Shell advert we did was our first real filming thing. Yeah. And then we were like, what, what's going on and stuff like that. And when that, and after that, I felt so proud of me and Kem for doing something like that because we put ourselves out there to do that. We weren't approached yeah. at the time. We put ourselves out there. We did our, we went all over London yeah. on the tube and stuff like that. And I know that's hard for people with anxiety. For us, it's not as bad, but we did that and we overcame. So put yourself in a limelight because you'll be so, or just push yourself to wherever you want to be, so you will be able to, you know what I mean, be there, and you will respect yourself for it. Okay, so on a positive note, life has changed uh, drastically yeah. or in a very good way for yourself, mm -hmm. Kem. You probably got up in your previous life about 6.30, 7 o'clock, washed yourself, shaved yourself, went to the barber shop and done haircuts. Tell me about life now as the winner well, of I'm, Love Island. I'm not sleeping, put it that way. Like I'm sleeping averagely probably about two hours a night, I'll be honest. It's, it's not great, but it, it, it's mad. Like, the opportunities I've been given since leaving that villa is, is literally, you, like, I couldn't dream of it. To, to leave the villa to, and to, to leave the villa and be the first ever person to get a spin-off show with ITV was surreal as it was, do you know what I mean? Like, I couldn't even believe it. I've been filming the show, the show broke the viewing figures, goals that we thought it was gonna get. Then the song came out, the song got number one. I've got so much more in the pipeline, it's just crazy to take it all in at my age, but got a great team around me, got great friends, and do you know what I mean? Like, it's literally only the start, like, there's so much exciting stuff coming. But the most important thing for me is just to stay grounded, keep my feet on the ground, do you know what I mean? That's why I do things like this, where I come see my boys, I go out with my family. 
Otherwise, you will lose your head, do you know what I mean? You're around it. It's, it's a bit crazy going from that to this. Yeah. It is yeah. mad, do you know what I mean? Like, I, I'm not embarrassed to admit. Like, you do make a lot more money. You're around other people. You, it's so easy to lose your head. It happens. But if you've got the right people that keep you grounded, you'll stay. I think you'll stay successful. I think that's where oh, people yeah. go off track from where they lose their head. Yeah, if they lose their head and they become someone that they're not, then they lose their selling point. Because there's no point faking your way through life, I suppose. Like you, you're, you're real. I was watching, when I was watching the show, helping out with your social and stuff, it was just like, just talk, like, it was surreal for me because I was watching my friend on telly and obviously you're passionate because it's your pal. But he was being himself and I spoke to your brother, I spoke to his like most nights and it was just like, yeah, he's being real. It's, we talked about a lot of things, but do you know what I mean? You just got to be real. Yeah, being real is so important. It gave me a platform and I've, I've jumped on it, do you know what I mean? And like, I'm, I'm making the most out of what I've got, but I'm doing it in the right way. I, like I said from the beginning, I want to be credible. I want longevity in my career. I don't want to just snap everything as soon as I've left. So I've, t I've turned a lot down since I've left, which people think that one day you could potentially regret. But for me, I've got a, with a goal with my long term. I want to stay in TV. I want to do presenting. And these opportunities are coming now because I've decided to to, to yeah, um, you keep your, you keep so your exclusivity. Talking about appearances, you do a lot of uh, public appearances yeah. now. Would you consider doing a public appearance at a barbering event, yeah. bearing in mind that this is ultimately, you was, you know, before finding the TV show, by Miles' Miles's admission, you was a great barber and yeah. you was one to watch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah 100%. I'd, I'd, I'd 100%, I said this before, just, just fun-wise, just yeah, of enjoyment. I'd love, to, like I'd love to like come to like a big event, watch Miles, do you know what I mean? Potentially go on stage, I don't know about cut because I'm a bit rusty, but go, go on stage, have a little chat, take that, just chat to people, do a little meet and um, yeah, get involved, do you know what I mean? I'd, I'd enjoy that actually, but obviously he's just finding time. Well, he's done, he's done like the Great British, like people don't realise, but Kem's done the Great British Barber Bash, he's done Salon International, Barber he's, he's done Barber Connect, he's done these things. And he was literally on the edge of blowing up in the industry because... Some people are just destined for it, whether it's yeah, be, whether with, it with be. a pair of clippers in their hand. To then present incredible shows. I was on Good Morning Britain. Yeah. I was this, do you know what I mean? Like, he's just mad and I just think it's all about your attitude towards work yeah. and just being likeable. Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah, and yeah like, being yourself is mad. Yeah, I'd like, to, I'd like to come see you on stage, do you know what I mean? Support. That's my main thing. I want to well, come when, you do, when you do your, bit, your, your hair stuff and, do you know what I mean? It's, I'm sure when the hair stuff comes, it'll be it'll be floating around places like that. I, it'll be stupid not to. Do you know what I mean? Of course. Just remi remind us, what was your speciality in barbering? Was you kind of like a clipper fading kind of guy? Or was you? When I first started with him, his fades weren't on point. That was it. His long haircuts were sick. We used to we used to do a haircut that we used to call the forte. Me and you yeah. used to call it the forte, and he smashed proper it. Proper Essex boy haircut. Proper Essex boy. But then basically my haircut. Yeah, yeah, the forte with a taper. Then we stopped working together. I went my, else. We both left Brad's, yeah. didn't we? We both went. We both worked in exactly the same area. Both in Hornchurch with those different shops. And then like Kem's fades just become like a madness, in it. Like, and it just, let's, let's just, be beca it just become my thing. I was just fade, 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 and like, I just become obsessive about fades. Like yeah, I was doing videos, everything. Like my fades were just getting ridiculous. Weren't ridiculous, they? and no one can take that away from you. Like you've done your Love Island. But realistically, you you like I've said already in the interview, like you were gonna. Even when I was in, like, even when I was in Love Island, like people didn't realize that like, Marcel who was in there had Afro Caribbean hair. Everyone was like, he must, he had like skin fade fresh every time. I was like, that was me doing it with just one set of clippers and a couple guards. Like, I was giving it everyone's fades while I was in there. I enjoy it. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's my time to relax. But that is like my speciality. Like, I love the fades. Obviously, I'm a bit rusty. I'm like, even in the villa. I've been a little bit rusty doing a couple trips. But you still know what you're doing. Like, yeah, I know. When I when I watched it, when I when I was watching it, you kind of hair. It's like yeah, but like, he hasn't forgot his skill no, set. No. that will never go fully. So you was you you've got a tell me the story on your track your song that's just come out because you've broke yet another record yeah. with music. Tell yeah. Me. So when we was filming the my show, we got we didn't actually know but we got called in to a meeting like during the show we didn't know and then it was with Sony and then Sony basically because obviously on the show it went a bit mad Stormzy was bigging us up it was just a bit crazy mm. everyone knew everyone wanted us to release a track we didn't know it was going to happen. 
Sony called us in and basically offered us a record deal, which is a bit surreal itself. So we signed with Sony. In the in the in the villa. No, so when we left the villa, okay, and I started okay. the Manu show. Okay, okay, okay. I signed with Sony and then got in the studio. People like Pro Green, Young, and Kreplin Conan all helping us make this song. So we made this song on the show, performed it in ministry, and then we released it with Sony. And then it went number one in like two hours. It was like the most um, week, most sold week one for a debut artist of 2017. Yeah. Um, just blew up. Which is insane. Blew they, up. For a debut artist to hit the numbers that they were hitting was just I reckon we upset incredible. quite a lot of people probably, but underdog is what it is. Yeah. But the thing is, we had a laugh. And you know what, we, we, we really, I think the song's really good and a lot of people like it and it's catchy. I know. And I see, it's, you're, you're, you're a rapper, aren't you, primarily? Well, yeah, I guess you could call it rap. I'm not really, like, I'm, I wasn't a rapper, but yeah, I'm rapping no, in it. But yeah, he, right. he raps and he raps. He's a professional well. rapper. Once you, they, once, you're, one, once you get paid for it. Yeah, once your your palms have been greased for any particular activity, <laughs> then you're a professional at it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You're a professional rapper. Bloody hell. I did change my rapper. Uh, my bio on Twitter to rapper to be fair. I think it should be. The yeah. rapper. It should be the Kem the rapper. It works though. And the song I like me and Kem are grime heads. Like we are grime heads. That's what we would put on in the shop. And Love uh, Grime. Yeah. And that's a banger. I'll tell him if it weren't. But it is a banger. It's catchy, it's good, chorus is nice, beat sick. It's good. It's a very good show. Download right. it. Down. Larry, you've got to download it. I'm going to download it as soon as we finish this. How long have we got, Kem? Because you've got another yeah, appointment. Not too long. Go on, give me time scale. Five. Five minutes. Right. Stag and Dagger. Yeah. What's new and what's good about Stag and Dagger and what can I expect if they come into this shop? Um, good haircuts, good banter. The, the, the usual you get in a barber shop, but it's just done properly. Everything's branded, everything's legit. Everything looks good. We've got our own aftershave range, which isn't the same as every other barber's got. Uh, we've got our own wet product range, like hair wax, um, pomades, sea salt sprays. Um, Osmo have hooked us up with a few little bits and pieces here and there because I helped them formulate their shave, the new shave spray. Uh, so Shanae's looked after me with that. Uh, we've got tonics, fresh heads in for sale, but it's different. We've, it's not a massive shop, but it's a small shop, clean shop. It's all about being minimalistic and being fashion. It's got charisma. Forward. It's got a lot of charisma in the shop, and I think yeah. you've seen you've seen a lot of big barbers come out from small shops that have just got personality and good haircuts. So that's like, yeah. That's that's what I want to do. Per, a shop with personality, good haircuts, and good vibes, and good vibes. It doesn't have to be poncy. It doesn't have to be muggy. It doesn't have to be. Oh, look at me! I'm doing this, that, and the other like certain other people do. Um, I'm. Literally, I went away from the industry for a while from Gorilla Barber and stuff. Dealt with dealt with a few things myself, and I'm back basically. And I'm not I'm not holding any punches. Basically, we're gonna smash it. He's about to smash the scene, basically. Yeah. Okay. Some say. And Kem, closing words to the young barber out there that's in the shop cutting hair. He feels like his life's going nowhere. Yeah. Give him some hope. Um, for young barbers out there, like forget like like forget the show, forget anything. Like, just about barbering in general. Um be around good good barbers. Don't put yourself in a shop where you might feel like you're getting loads of time on a chair, but you ain't around good be around a barber that's enthusiastic, that's a lot better than you that's gonna put time in to teach you teaching you. That was the best thing with me. I was around people that were older than me, more experienced, they put time in, they taught me. And just don't copy everyone else, put your own style in it because these people that everyone's looking up to got there because they done their own thing and become different. So you copying them, you're only copying the crowd. I think the one thing about barbering that's so special is there's no wrong or right way to do anything, really. Some, you, you see someone walking around with a line in their hair, they might want that line. Three months later, that might be a trend. There is literally no wrong. Someone might say that's not blended in. Well, they might want a wedge in it, and three months later, you might see at a show that someone's having a wedge, and that's yeah. the new trend. There is no wrong or right way. There's so much experimenting you can do with it. Put your own touch to everything. Put your own style, and you can go anywhere with it, innit? Like, with this industry, there's no point. It's, it's not an office job. Just do your thing, and literally, oh, yeah. Yeah. There's no right, you're not going to get told off, there's no, as long as your client's happy, you just put your own... There's good and bad, but there's no right and wrong. Okay. 100%. And I and think with barbering, it's, just gonna, it's only going to get bigger and bigger, so 
snap it and do it now before it's, it's too hard to get into. That's the way I say it. Because yeah. And what's your views on the magazine? Get, get the magazine at the back there. Barb Revo, this the I was actually gonna we, I think we was I think I either done work with Barb Revo yeah, we or was gonna Oh we was in it before I went. Yeah, great I think it's a really good magazine actually. It looks professional. The photos are really nice and they get good content in there, don't they? And I think something like this is perfect because it gives barbers, competitive barbers, people that own shops a chance to look at what other people are doing, what's out there, products, stuff like that, and what everyone's up to. So I think like something like this is, is really good. What's it's that? the power. Joey Power. The boy. You've got quite a few pages as well. I think you've yeah. got eight pages. Who was that with? Who was that with? Was that with you? Yeah, yeah no, I interviewed Jerry. Yeah. Barber, man. Yeah. He That's got me. eight. Eight pages. It's not just about him. Yeah. And his cuts. He's he did good. a studio. He did a cut in the studio. He's been doing his own collections. Yeah, collections. He's exactly. He's, he's Gorilla Gang. Yeah, that's right, yeah. I know that. Right, let's close up because Kem's got to go to the studio, create more banging. No, nah, I'm not going to the studio, but I've got, I've got, I've got some, some music things. business. No, nah, no studio. Well. Right, so this is Larry the Barber Man closing up. Like I said, we were blessed and privileged to have the winner of Love Island 2017, my pleasure, my pleasure. Kem, and we're also here for the opening, the grand opening of Stag and Dagger Barbershop with Miles. Thank you. Luis. <laughs> <laughs> For our save Davis again. Right, guys, we're out of there. Cheers, Thank you. Bye-bye.